All right, so just really quickly as far as the definition for reference angles. Okay, it's, it's just the angle formed at the origin when you draw in the reference triangle. Okay, so remember, the trig that you learned was right triangle trig, right? Okay, but this is dealing with rotational angles. And so what, what the reference angles allow you to do is kind of tie in the rotational angle into the right triangles, the ones that you guys are kind of familiar with. Okay, so let's start with just angle measures themselves. Okay, so if I say you have 200 degrees and you want to find the reference angle, Okay, so if you're looking at 200 degrees, my recommendation is sketch the angle. Okay, so you know that all angles begin with an initial side that's the positive x-axis. Okay, when I draw this in, I'm rotating in the, the counterclockwise rotation as a positive angle. I go up 90 degrees. I continue to go 180 degrees. I haven't quite hit 200 yet. And I have to go an additional how many more degrees past 180? 20, 20 more. So when I look at this, Here's my uh, ending side, my terminal side. The reference triangle, the, the right triangle that you use as a reference here is going to be just a vertical line drawn from your terminal side. It could be anywhere on your terminal side. Vertical line to the x-axis. Here is my triangle. The reference angle is always going to be this angle formed at the, the origin right here. Okay, so when I look at this angle, I went 180 degrees plus an additional how many? 20. So the reference angle for this is going to be 20 degrees. And now let's see what happens, <clears throat> what happens if we go in the negative direction. Okay. So what if we took uh, negative 150? Or actually let's go negative 250. Okay, so if we want to find what is the reference angle for negative 250, if you sketch your angle, okay, so here's my initial side. Now I'm going to go in the negative direction, which is clockwise. Here I go 90 degrees, 180, so I'm still going. I have to go how many more degrees past 180 to get to negative 250? Okay, so do I, do I stay in this quadrant or do I go to the next quadrant? Okay, so approximately right here would be my angle. Okay, and so if you think about, I went 180 plus an additional 70 degrees. That means this angle right here is 70. When I draw in my reference angle, vertical line straight down to the x-axis, the angle formed at the origin is my, ver or is my reference angle, which is this one. So it happens to be exactly 70 degrees. All right, now it gets a little more complicated when you start dealing with radians because you guys... We, we don't necessarily work with or think in terms of radians. So let's take a look at what happens when we use radians. Okay, if we take, um, okay, seven pi over five, okay, and you wanna find what is that, in, or what is the reference angle for this? Okay, now I purposely gave you an angle that doesn't fit the, the values that you've established on the unit circle. Okay, so what you need to do on this is you need to be able to break down 180 degrees, okay, which is one pi, into whatever fractional units your uh, given angle has. So this given angle is in terms of fifths, right? So we're gonna take this one rotation of pi that I've drawn right here and we're gonna break it into five equal parts. Okay, so starting for here, from here we go one, two, three, four, five. Does everybody see how I got that? They're not necessarily accurate, but they portray five equal units along this. And now I'm gonna go past one full rotate or one pi rotation, right? So I do wanna complete that on the back side, the bottom side too. So I'm gonna break that into five equal parts. So one, two, three, four, five. Okay, so does everybody see how I, like all of these markings, each one represents one-fifth pi. Okay, and so now you can do the same counting that we did with our degrees. Start with your initial side. 
we're going to rotate in the positive direction, which is counterclockwise, and we're going to go seven of these fifths. So here's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So here is my angle. Okay, and so when I draw my reference triangle, it can be anywhere along this terminal side, vertical line to the x-axis, and the angle that's formed at the origin is my reference angle. And so when I look at this, I can see this angle right here represents how many fifths? Here's one, here's two. So I can just count that. My reference angle is two fifths pi. Does everybody see how you can do that kind of visually? It's rather than trying to remember a formula for each individual quadrant, I mean, you can just count it out in this way. Let me do one more example with radians. And then if there's any other questions, I'll look through them. All right, so let's say, or let me break this into, again, one that's not a common breakdown for the unit circle. Okay, but when I look at this, I'm going to break my rotation of pi into how many fractional units? 10. So if I just think that 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Okay, and so from this I'm going to, I don't go past one full pi rotation, so I can just leave it the top part. And as I count these, I count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So I can draw my angle. When I get my reference triangle, I draw a vertical line straight down to the x-axis. The angle at the origin is my reference angle. And so this angle represents how many tenths? Three. Just count. One, two, three tenths left. So three pi over ten would be my reference angle for that.